Trust your vision, your gifts, and your duty to move forward with integrity. You were given this vision, this vision of hope, change, for a reason. Let this be confirmation that you're on the right path. Satnam, I'm Devi here, offering a general reading, a collective message, only take what resonates. Part of the reason why the duties, the assignments feel so daunting is the process by which the divine works through you to initiate change. You not only have to alchemize something within yourself to persevere in this lifetime and whatever load you're meant to release in this lifetime, you're also part of the process for groups and individuals to release their load and it happens through you and the process by which you connect and operate like whatever skill set you're given on this planet so it could be a relationship it could be harmony in the household or lack of it could be the workplace a community a program so it's not cut and dry and the last reading, I don't know how clear I was in communicating that, that through, is that you, again, are on the right path, but this idea of seeing anew is something they want you to hold onto and trust that vision. Um, and none of the words are coming to me, so it's, I'm going to table that. Um, and it's important to recognize, and this comes up in reading sometimes, you're, you're meant to cut cords, you're meant to leave workplaces, you're meant to leave relationships, you're meant to create some distance in certain social settings or even your blood family or whatever. Cycles have to close out for new energies to evolve. So something has to come to a close for something else to grow. This is where that last reading would come more into play is that idea of the seed and it takes time for that seed to germinate and grow. And in that time, you might be cast a villain for stepping out, but really your job is to plant that seed. It's not necessarily your job to nurture that seed. In fact, your energy is probably needed in other situations. So it's almost like a waste of your energy, so to speak. It's not your job to tend the soil always or tend that garden. It's to teach others to tend their own garden as you plant the seed. It's like as a, as a parent, um, you don't wanna be a helicopter parent, right? You want to give your children the tools to take care of themselves in the long run. I used to tell my daughter, I'm not always going to be here, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, it's a harsh reality that, yeah, I might wanna do things for her, but she's gotta learn to do for herself. Um, so the cycles of closing out came to me uh, through the idea of a salmon. I don't know much about salmon, but yes, after they spawn, they do uh, They do, do move on to <laughs> the death is the next part of their journey. So I just looked that up. I'm not going to go into that. Um, just I wanted to be sure that as I was giving that information, there's salmon passing on that I wasn't just making that up. So Sometimes looking at information from something outside of the spiritual community, outside of that rhetoric, is actually beneficial to find symbolism, meaning, uh, give me the word closure, uh, closure, closure to the past that has come up recently, especially with these last cycles, which is why the energies have been so intense because you're releasing that, and it's closure from the guilt uh driven guidelines it's driven by the idea that we can't put things to rest we have to keep holding on to things right and it, you know it's considered quite cold not to hold on to let go but think about it a teacher can't follow their second grade student throughout the, the course of that that student's lifetime there's a point in which we move on and there's still love there and understanding tower okay something's really being shaken up here with this vision and change i love the tower with inspiration what are you inspired this is what deck is this 
I can't remember. I think of Muse of the Art, Oracle, Oracle the Muse. Inspiration to see anew is what I want to say to you. Should the Five of Inspiration be coupled with the Five of Pentacles? It's like you weren't left out. You weren't left out. So you bringing change to a community, a workplace, a complete family, like multiple individuals and even, you know, a really intense karmic load and a more intimate connection, whatever it is, you're alchemizing that space and it requires a ton of energy moving through you to melt that resistance. It can be daunting. It can be tires. We want to give me the cumbersome. It can be hard. And in the process of feeling their resistance and the process of you breaking free of your own personal cycles, right? As well as theirs might lead you to believe there's something wrong with you. You're job hopping or you're like here I am in another relationship that isn't quite working out how I first envisioned it um here it is stirring up uh, some chaos in the community or the social setting is no longer as serene as it was it's because your light illuminated the need for change and it comes through in wonky ways and you holding space for that change to to take place and to transmute those energies. The word alchemize was coming through before. And if you, and I don't have the notes to make sure my memory is correct, but it's my understanding. If you look at the word alchemy or alchemize, it's melting metal. So it requires heat. Think about how high your frequency needs to be to melt through, to change the physical reality in which you stand. You were brought into that place for a reason. You were brought to that connection for a reason. And because you might see a cycle of here I am dealing with another narcissist. Oh, here's another uh, toxic relationship. Oh, leaving another job. Or here, this social setting is not as peaceful. Why does social settings usually work out for everyone else? It's because their duty isn't the same as yours. Their duty is not the same as yours. God has given you a duty and you're brought here to make change for the greater good. You're not there to make change out of your own ego. And a lot of times in the spiritual community or even in workplaces, people have a vision and push through with their ego. You're not there with your ego. You're there with pure intent and integrity. It doesn't mean you don't slip up and have your own emotions and karmic load to work through. What I'm saying is your assignment has great purpose. And over the time of you working through, think of a veteran or someone going out to work, they come back with PTSD. So you have some flashes of a reality that make you feel like you're not worthy, you're not good enough, something's not wrong with you. And I'm here to say, you're doing a great job, keep it up, just check in. Am I moving forward with integrity? Where and how is this guidance coming through me for? Like, where's this guidance coming from is what I wanted to say. And I, I just said, I don't want you to overanalyze the messages, rather trust your intuition. The sun, uh, let's see flip this around sun the priestess mm. i'm not quite sure what to say other than you know maybe it's important to also consider your own happiness and when you're closing out cycles you know what's gr best for you is also best for god or best for all because the angels can work through you when you are vibrating at a higher frequency if you get down you can't do your work Right? So trust your intuition of what's best for you to also be best for all parties involved. And one, one thing I was thinking about the other day, oh my gosh, I'm losing the words again. Um, I was having some slips yesterday in, in my memory. Um, Oh, sorry. I just totally lost that. <laughs> there was something uh, about your, your self-care and the way it came through to me 
was in a way that I can't, couldn't rationally outthink the fact that I, I, my own physical needs <laughs> and emotional needs are important. Um, their needs, oh, that's what it was. Okay, so emotions, think of the emotional bucket. And sometimes I feel quite cold, cold and I <laughs> talk to, I have a friend that would talk to about this and another person and be like, fuck your feelings. <laughs> and it's not that your feelings don't matter, but we kind of have, and this is one way that like uh, co-parenting with Zoe's dad worked out so well. It's like, no blood, no foul. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> and it's like, it's kind of harsh. And yes, do we need to be soft and honor emotions? And I've kind of been like reflecting on this. Yes, on some level. And on, for me personally, you don't have to agree with any of this. You can be as soft and sensitive as you want. But for me personally, sometimes when the emotions get heavy, I have to cut. Like I have to cut off that emotions and it's like, fuck your feelings, gotta keep going, right? Because I lose my happiness, I lose my joy. It gets too heavy because I need to wake up in the morning and get up. Does that make sense? Because if I dwell on the emotions, it gets heavier and heavier and heavier and I sink. And so I have to find and that's the best way for me to remain elevated. Um, another example, someone had asked about uh, some of the things happening in the political arena, some things that were happening um, in the world at large that are, you know, the harsh realities, for, for example. And I said, for me, I have to function like a horse, a horse pulling a, a cart like with the blinders up i have to put blinders up to keep going so I put blinders up in the on those horse horses so they can stay in their lane and they're not afraid of the ongoing traffic the traffic there yeah is it real yeah but i can't tune into it because that's not my mission some of you have that mission to tune in and alchemize certain aspects of reality that i'm not right and so you have to pick and choose where you focus your energy because otherwise you're spinning your wheels. You're spinning your wheels. It's like prioritizing tasks in the workplace. Uh, you can't go in too many directions. You actually have to create time blocks. You have to strategize. You have to prioritize um, action items in order to accomplish anything. Excuse me. All right. Let's keep cleaning it up not to be afraid I, I be afraid of the changes don't be afraid of the vision don't be afraid to be get closer to God to get closer to you as he works through you and you probably have to work with the fear in the mind and really working above the fear that you're bound to or the karmic load you are bound to and rise above the past in this lifetime those notice how the seven is actually depicted in another timeline, right? So other timelines you have to rise above and not be shackled to other timelines. You're cleaning up multiple timelines. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna take that as a message because you get the, the backup beeping. Um, maybe that's a warning that the energies are from the past. So it's just interesting. We're talking about the past and you know, a vehicle with their, uh, their beeping uh, bottom deck 23 to five. That's so changes here. That's two, two fives, three, three fives, five, five, five. Can you see? I'm sorry. I'm not so, um, satisfaction, honor your uniqueness, do what makes you feel good. So that comes back uh, to the happiness, turning it around. What feels good for you is also going to raise the frequency on the planet. Don't have guilt for what is great and best for you. We need you to be at your best. <laughs> uh, high standards, that's coming to mind. Let me see it carved out. Oh my goodness, another five. <laughs> Not lying. Cosmic Ruby. Be 
be a peace ambassador. I wanted to say peaceful. Um, practice cosmic mastery. So you coming back to your happiness, you coming back to contentment also exemplifies the need to others, but how you do it, how you do it. So it's like leading by example, being that change, as Gandhi would say, rather than telling someone what to do. <laughs> I'm so guilty on. And sometimes I teach yoga or meditation because sometimes I, I have a hard time sitting still. Took for this foot injury or, well, that's Achilles. Um, for me to be forced to sit still. And it's kind of worked like that over the course of this lifetime. Like sometimes the divine will just sit me down whether I want to or not to make me take a look. And this is, this is coming to mind. To trust your intuition. Like how strong do the messages need to be for you to, to believe? Between worlds. I love this. So you're working, you're working through a cast. The word cast keeps coming up. And my injury did not require a cast. So I feel like it's like cast of characters that you're, you're working through. And then I'm seeing the card in the urban tarot. It's like, I think it's a jack, but they're kind of using their fingers to show a picture. So it's kind of like you coming back to that vision. So I put a kaleidoscope out in case that speaks to you. But it's like you're seeing things in a different way. They can't see it yet. Sometimes they don't see it clearly until you're gone. Because it's not your job to totally clean it up. It's your job to highlight the need for change. All right. Last card. Eight. The tribe. Uh, trust your tribe. And you do have a tribe on this planet that supports you. Uh, check in and tune in with them. Uh, it's calling out. And this could be your soul tribe on this planet. Uh, they do lend a hand. Your guides lend a hand. Your tribe lends a hand. Trust it. Um, continue to nurture your inner child. You're, you're, you're loving the all parts of you. Rainbow. An idea of the calm and the storm. Light at the end of the tunnel. Planting seeds. Oh, beautiful. I didn't even notice this before. I noticed that the light right at the heart as he's working the soil. How oh, beautiful. <laughs> she watches him and the little one watches her. If that calls out, if that calls out. Well, I do hope this serves well. Sending lots of love and light on your journey. Thank you for all you do.